Hey everyone, my name is Leila and today I'm going to show you my Amouage fragrances and um, it's uh, my whole collection of uh, full bottles and I'm afraid this is not the end. Um, I decided to split this video just because, you know, um, I have uh, quite a lot of fragrances and uh, this is the first reason. The second reason is um, because for me all the fragrances of Amouage, they are divided to two categories. Those that were created under the leadership of uh, creative director uh, of Amouage, Christopher Chong, and those that were created after he left. So today I will show you the old ones and uh, the next video will be about the new ones, the new releases. So it's very important to talk about the uh, Christopher Chong because without knowing him, without understanding what he was for Amorge, it's difficult to understand the fragrances themselves. Um, just to show you the scale of uh, Christopher Chong um, in, in the Amorge brand, he was the same like Steve Jobs was for Apple or Karl Lagerfeld was for uh, Chanel, so Christopher Chong was for Amorge. He has a very um, uh, unique uh, artistic approach uh, to his fragrance. He had a very artistic, unique approach because he came from the artistic um, field. He had uh, an artistic creative background. Uh, he um, had a PhD in London University. He became a professor of literature. He also um, studied uh, opera singing for 10 years. He had a, a lyric baritone. So um, he always was um, dealing with uh, art and all the fragrances, they reflect his personality for sure. They also called him a Sigmund Freud of uh, perfumery because he managed to liquefy a human state. So I think at the same time he was a very good psychologist. Unfortunately he had to leave and I think it wasn't his decision. I, I think he had to because um, the, the CEO of Amouage was changed, uh, um, the previous CEO, um, uh, David Crickmore, he was the one who um, uh, employed uh, Christopher Chong on, in 2007 without any experience in perfumery uh, to this position and once the CEO was changed, once um, David Crickmore left the company the same month, um, Christopher Chong also left. It's also very important to say about the history of the brand itself um, to help you to, you know, to, to, to understand the fragrances better. So in 1983, the Sultan of Oman, uh, Kabuz bin Said, he asked uh, the Prince Said to found a company that will preserve the perfume making um, traditions of Oman. And um, it was from the ancient time that Oman was very famous for its um, incense, from the frankincense. Um, and the, the company was created just to, to emphasize this um, a very um, precious ingredient. At the same time, they wanted to create uh, fragrances that will be gifted to the uh, worldwide leaders who visited Oman and visited Sultan as a symbol of Oman. The Amorj legend says that the incense uh, used in Amorj fragrances is a special incense. It grows in uh, frankincense uh, trees in the southern part of Oman and it's like a special type of incense uh, because the uh, weather is there very humid uh, that affects the incense it itself and it's uh, some top high quality and it's picked by hands and uh, transported to the capital of Oman to Muscat and there to the Amouage factory. The symbols of Oman are definitely there especially if you look at the, the bottle, um, the woman's version, it has, first of all, all of them, they have a logo, the sun, and this is the royal seal of Oman. The cap is the dome of the Ruvi Mosque, which is one of the biggest mosques in Oman. And if you look at the men's uh, fragrance, the cap symbolizes the dagger, which is also the symbol of the um, Omani symbol that they use on, in the flag and in the banknotes. So um, definitely the whole bottle and the fragrance itself, it represents Oman and the royal quality. 
So uh, let's start talking about the fragrances themselves. And I will start with the oldest fragrance that was created in 1983, the same year when the company was founded. And uh, I have it in a small version here. This is Amouage Gold. That's the fragrance that was created in 1983. And this is uh, the, the very first um, creation of Amouage that also was very successful because they invited um, the perfumer, the nose behind this fragrance was very famous uh, perfumer, Guy Robert. He created uh, Kelly Kalesh for Hermes, he created Dior Sense for Dior, uh, he created uh, Madame Rochelle for Rochelle, so he had a very famous creations. However, this fragrance, uh, Amouage Gold, he considered um, the best of the best. Uh, the best of his creations. This fragrance is very classic, I would say. Uh, it definitely belongs to the old school and a gorgeous, gorgeous um, fragrance that reflects the beauty of um, incense, uh, mirror. It has some animalic notes. It also has rose, uh, iris roots. It's quite powdery. So it's like dark, powdery, classical, very expensive. Um, fragrance that gives me the associations with the gold. I think the name suits it a lot. It's quite thick, I would say, and it uh, requires to dress up. Uh, I can't imagine this fragrance, uh, you know, in my daily life and day to day life. So uh, I think this is a fragrance for uh, going out, but that should be, you know, a very expensive restaurant or opera or theater. Um, the places that I don't visit unfortunately recently. So for me being such a beautiful fragrance um, This is not an easy to wear type of uh, fragrance. That's why I have it only in a small bottle however, I think uh, This fragrance is quite similar to the next fragrance that was created in 2002 um, Which I think was expired by by gold and this is Dia Amouage Dia. I have it also in a full in a big bottle in a full size bottle um, and i bought it it was my second fragrance that i bought from amouage and i love it so i'll show you my full size bottle i think i showed it before as well and this is um, also quite similar uh, to gold however it's more transparent and more young i think this is a younger sister of gold it's still classical also, um, it's a you know, classical French, um, uh, the, the represent, representative of classical French perfumery. Uh, however, it's very wearable, it's quite modern to my nose. Uh, it's also powdery, uh, it has aldehydes that give this fragrance a coldness. It's quite cold, it's like fresh air. Uh, it's floral, it's very feminine, but at the same time it uh, smells very expensive and uh, at the same time it's very wearable. So uh, it's like a day version of gold, I would say, that you can easily wear to the office. Um, of course you need to dress up in terms of you need to um, wear something um, that is not very casual for sure. Uh, it can be formal, you can wear heels, but I can't imagine wearing this with a um, sports shoes as I said in my previous videos as well. It's very beautiful, it's long lasting as the, I would say most of the fragrances of Amouage. Uh, I think Amouage is very famous for its longevity and uh, projection. This is one of them, so be careful, don't overspray. I think the perfect uh, weather for this fragrance is uh, spring weather and summer even if it's not too hot. The next uh, is the fragrance that was created in 2007 and I also had it in this um, set. It's a reflection, it's this one, uh, quite a um, uh, mirror type of uh, silver type of uh, bottle and after I uh, smelled this first, it was a long time ago, probably 10 years ago, I um, didn't like it at all. I thought, what is this? Um, but you know, things change and never say never. This is definitely, I can say about the, myself and uh, my uh, perception of the fragrances because it changes with years. And I think this is what I needed nowadays during the summer, hot weather here in the desert, because a moisture reflection is like the sip of a cold, ice cold water in a desert and I ended up with buying the full bottle 
and I'm so happy uh, because this is a gorgeous gorgeous fragrance of flowers white flowers dipped in a ice cold water uh, it's another one I have already this type of fragrances but it, you know it's never enough uh, the fresh fragrances you know you, you can't get enough of them this one is also a bit green it's really cold it's really fresh it's ideal for springtime and even for summer and as I said this is what I needed at this you know 40 plus degrees outside uh, it doesn't last that long I would say it's not that you know um, projecting and um, the statement type of fragrance because it's quite subtle it's light it's airy it's watery it's not aquatic uh, at all but you can feel hot uh, cold uh, water there for sure uh, but at the same time again it's very wearable so being uh, subtle it makes it uh, very wearable you can wear it anywhere you want any time of the day and uh, I think it's some sort of safe even safe blind buy I would say uh, I can't imagine someone who wouldn't like this fragrance some people can feel cucumber here or um, uh, melon I can't say that uh, I feel all those notes for me again this is a very um, very beautifully done and mixed uh, freesia magnolia like white flowers mixed with the water with the cold water notes um, and it's gorgeous and green notes uh, as well it's beautiful it's very beautiful it's really your reflection in the cold water i would say it's not a reflection if uh, you're looking at the mirror but it's definitely your request, uh, reflection when you look at the water the cold water in the pond or in the lake the next year 2008 was created uh, lyric man and for me this is the most beautiful wild rose i could imagine it's it's like a dry dry deep red wine from wild roses mixed with lots of um, citruses like sour citruses the flash of citruses i would say and some bitter green notes uh, the bitter grass uh, i would say in the bottom very unique very chong type of fragrance very again some sort of psychedelic type of fragrance um, it's not very um, typical it's not generic it's not like anything else you you smelled somewhere in a designers or other other niche fragrances i would say it's very unique but at the same time very wearable very likable and um, people it's one of the best sellers i would say uh, very refreshing um, at the same time and very unisex type of fragrance that can be easily you know um, used by men and women equally when I just purchased it I was complaining about the um, longevity of this fragrance uh, because you know I didn't feel it I didn't smell it after I would say 40 to 50 minutes uh, after spraying but I gave it some time to settle and after two weeks it became a beast believe me now when I spray my clothes and uh, I could smell it even after uh, weeks it smells like if I sprayed it just you know yesterday so intensive so very beautiful fragrance of very high quality the next fragrance was created in 2009 and this is Amouage Epic this very beautiful green bottle here and um, I tested this fragrance uh, before in the Amouage corner in Dubai Mall and I tend to like it uh, on the blotter on the paper uh, I thought it's gorgeous it was one of my uh, wishlist fragrances I put it in, in my basket and after I smelled this one here uh, I just you know because if this is a splash bottle I just probably applied two to three drops on my wrist and um, it was gorgeous I thought definitely I'm going to buy this next time the next day after I tried it again and applied some more uh, to my shoulder it started to choke me and some note there which is like some sort of sweet annoying um, note it bothered me the whole day and I decided that no I will not buy this now because something you know uh, disturbs me in this fragrance However, I need to say that this is a very beautiful green type of fragrance that 
reminds me of the uh, deep, deep uh, green woods with that. It's like a, a you know a magical wood. I would say it's not a typical wood. It's a magical wood. It's a wood from the fairy tale, and some magical berries grow there some magical roots and grass some magical plants definitely grow there it's again a very Christopher Chong style type of fragrance uh, also I can say it's a very complex and psychedelic type of fragrance the notes that are mentioned here is the uh, pink oleander um, it's uh, spices uh, flowers and the base it's quite big it has a uh, wood, it has a uh, guayac wood, it has, uh, I think it has uh, geranium, it has uh, some tea, green tea notes. I mean, it's very interesting and unique composition altogether. And it's very, very attractive, I would say. And if it marries with your skin happily, believe me, you will fall in love with this fragrance. It has quite a high rating on Fragrantica, more than four, uh, based on three, more than 3,000 um, voices, like votes. So it's um, an amazing fragrance. Uh, however, unfortunately, it didn't work for me. And after Epic uh, in 2010 comes uh, the fragrance that um, helped me to fall in love with the brand itself and it pulled uh, all the other fragrances um, after uh, I bought this one. Um, this is, you know, one of the my favorite fragrances in, in all together, in all the fragrances, in all collection that I have, not only if, among Amouage fragrances, but in total, in general, I love it with all my heart. And I think this is... Um, one of my um, sides, I would say, uh, if I could give this fragrance another name, I would call it Dark Side, but I'm talking about Amouage Memoir. This is a fragrance that encapsulates all the things that I love in perfume. It has pink pepper, it has cardamom, I love cardamom. It has um, leather, it has oak moss, it has rose. This is definitely a shipwreck. And of course, the star of the show here is incense. You know, it, it's a very incense -y, beautiful, dark, a bit sweet, very um, spicy at the same time, amazing creation. I think it's totally unisex. I could easily imagine this on man. Um, in general, I think most of the fragrances um, created by Amouage is uh, unisex and I wouldn't divide them to men and women how they did. However, again, if you want to expand your experience, I would suggest if you're a man, try the woman's version and vice versa. So this is for me like a universe. This is a cosmic type of fragrance. This is like a dark material. This is... Um, this is a genius, you know, it's, it's a very talented creation of the perfumer who is, by the way, the same perfumer of the Epic. And um, as far as I know, he had, uh, he, he created only three, four or five uh, perfumes at all. And then he stopped, uh, according to Fragrantica, he didn't do anything else. And I wonder why, because this is just, you know, this is a piece of art. And I wonder why he didn't want to continue. He's so talented. So, um, again, this is amazing fragrance, gorgeous fragrance. I don't have enough words to describe how I love it and how beautiful it is. Uh, it is quite loud, it is project projecting, everything is there. So if you haven't tried it yet, I highly recommend you to try it first by the sample or um, uh, the decant. Um, and. Uh, also tell me in the comments if you have this fragrance, what do you think about it and if you, ha if you tried it because, uh, you know, this is my heart. Again, uh, this is my other side. This is my alter ego. This is, mm, again, my dark side. And I think not only mine, since all the fragrances of Amouage are the, you know, also reflection of Christopher Chung, I think this is also his dark side. And if those are the memories, uh, because the fragrance is called Memoir, those are not happy memories, definitely. It's very, um, you know, uh, it's the fragrance that makes you to think. And unfortunately, those thoughts are not positive, I understand, but they are mm, dark, but very beautiful. In 2011, uh, the fragrance owner 
was created, this white bottle here. And this fragrance is all about uh, white flowers. It's about tuberose, magnolia, uh, sorry, uh, gardenia. So it's very creamy, uh, sweet at the same time, uh, but floral sweet. It has a floral sweetness uh, type of white flower fragrance that uh, people call like a wedding fragrance. However, for me, wedding fragrances should be very innocent, light, uh, very neutral, I would say. Uh, because this fragrance for me, it's not definitely a wedding type of fragrance. It's very, to me, it's very thick, it's heavy, it's mature, it's not that young. Um, however, it's still beautiful, but I can't imagine this fragrance on the, uh, you know, uh, on the bride, because uh, to me, the bride should wear something, again, very lightweight, airy, again, innocent, very young. Um, and this is quite, as I said, it's quite quite mature and quite thick. However, it's still beautiful. It's definitely very beautiful in case if you like tuberose, because the tuberose is the star of the show here. It's very loud, very prominent, uh, quite, you know, opulent, I would say. Uh, then definitely you need to try it. But to me, this is not a safe blind buy for sure. However, this fragrance is very popular. It's one of the best sellers as far as I know. Um, but not for me, unfortunately. But again, never say never. Probably I will, when I get older, and I will start um, to love to browse more than I do now, probably I will purchase this one as well. In 2013, the new fragrance was released, and this is Fate. It has a very beautiful bottle with this rainbow color patterns that I think is gorgeous. So this fragrance is uh the you know the the french vision of oriental fragrance i would say because this is a very oriental type of fragrance uh but done uh by french uh, perfumer and with a french um spirit with a french heart i would say but definitely this is all about the oriental spices so it has two i would say this is like a marriage the mother is uh french and the father is arabic um this is like a spice bazaar, I would say. It's uh, like, it has a lot of spices on the top, like pepper, it's um, uh, chili pepper, it's uh, black pepper. Um, it has, um, I think it has uh, also the cinnamon. So it is a very beautifully done and very well balanced type of, again, classical French uh, fragrance that definitely gives you the vibe of the old school. However, again, the timeless, you could say old school, but you could say it's a timeless uh, type of fragrance. Um, it also smells very expensive. It smells oriental, it smells French. And I can imagine wearing this during the fall time when it's cold, because this is the type of fragrance that warms you up when you wear uh, um, something black, something dark, and you want to um, add uh, this class to your look, uh, I would suggest to use this fragrance. Um, it's very long lasting, it's quite projecting. It's a type of fragrance um, that reminds me of Shalimar by, by Guerlain. So it's the same class, the same level, I would say even these days, since um, unfortunately the Guerlain fragrances, um, they lose their quality. In case if you love Shalimar and you used to love it all your life, like you remember how it was before and um, you are not very happy with the uh, modern quality of quality of Shalimar, I would suggest to go with this one and it will definitely remind you how it smelled like before. They also say, people also say that it's very uh, similar to opium again how it was used to be before before the reformulation like shalimar also uh, i would say yes you can definitely feel the quality in this fragrance it's definitely there very beautiful and i think a very good investment in perfumery uh, the next year 2014 and uh, the fragrance journey was released this is also a very beautiful bottle red color with uh, golden sides and for me, this is a borderline gourmand fragrance. I think this is the sweetest, uh, the sweetest fragrance in the whole line um, because it is a very, uh, you know, appetite-inducing, mouth-watering type of fragrance. But at the same time, it's not a straight-away and uh, eat-me type of uh, gourmand because it has, uh, except the notes of asmanthus, which is 
here it smells like uh, apricots very bright uh, yellow like sun like uh, bright apricots uh, honey which is also here very uh, sweet also sunny also amber type of um, amber color of the honey um, it also has uh, tobacco and um, it has leather notes here and because of those tobacco and leather notes uh, this fragrance is not uh, typical, like it's not a, like a piece of food that you want to eat. It's, it's, it stays uh, a perfume, it stays like a perfume, it's, it still is a perfume, it's not like a food. It is sweet, but it's sweet with a twist. Um, adorable fragrance, again, one of the best sellers and very likable, very safe, I would say. Um, something that I can see in many uh, bloggers' lists, I think this is, um, again, uh, compliment compliment induced type of fragrance you'll get lots of compliments uh, with this fragrance and the perfect time for it um, I think it's uh, colder times because it's quite sweet I would say so um, for me this is like a smile this fragrance uh, like it's like a smile on my face because every time I spray it I want to smile it is so uplifting it is so uh, positive and the next fragrance that was created the same year and also has uh, osmanthus notes it's also quite sweet and reminds me of honey uh, and also have this uplifting mood and very positive and it has the name that tells you about this uh, it's a sunshine woman and um, this fragrance is also about osmanthus that smells like a bit like leather and uh, a bit like apricots here it's also sweet um, it also reminds me of honey but it's uh, more fresh, I would say, and it has uh, some blackcurrant notes, I think, in the top. It also has a lot of almond. And since I'm not a big fan of almond, unfortunately, this is not my fragrance. I'm not a fan of almond notes, and almond here is quite prominent. Again, I admit the beauty of this fragrance. It is gorgeous, very beautiful. It's really like a, a sun in a bottle. However, it's not my sun. But my sun was released next year. It was released 2015. And this is um, Sunshine for Men. And this is my sun. Uh, I adore it. It's beautiful. I bought it blindly and I was very scared that I won't like it because um, it's one of the most controversial fragrances, I think, among Amouage. Um, releases and some people love it some people hate it however for me this is absolutely love um, this is the mixture of um, dried grass uh, like dried probably flowers uh, in the meadow mixed with a green grass mixed with lots and lots of lavender very beautiful lavender high quality lavender mixed with the sweetness of the tonka beans and uh, vanilla it's very warm it's really like a sun in the bottle it also has some booziness and some uh, citrus notes but those citruses like a sweet um, oranges they are very sweet it's not like a refreshing type of citruses for me this is definitely uh, sweet um, but definitely uh, citrusy but very sweet type of citruses i even think that this uh, sweet citruses they belong to to the uh, alcohol notes that i feel here like the boozy notes like it can be some boozy uh, citrus um, alcohol uh, like uh, I don't know maybe Campari uh, this type of notes however it's really really gorgeous beautiful totally unisex uh, as I said for me now I start looking at the men's fragrances in Amouage because I know that they can be considered unisex long-lasting uh, has projection everything is there like all of Amouage's and uh, I oversprayed it uh, when I just got it because it was intoxicating and I, I loved it so much that I oversprayed it and my husband choked, uh, he, he was about to choke in his car. Um, however, it's a very beautiful fragrance, believe me. Uh, again, this is not a safe blind buy. Again, I took a risk, I bought it blindly, but I like this game, you know. Uh, for me, this is like a casino for me. <laughs> so, uh, but again, uh, since the fragrance is not uh, cheap, uh, it is quite expensive, I wouldn't suggest to um, buy it blindly. So the next uh, year was uh, in 2016, the fragrance that was released was um, the fragrance from a garden collection and this is uh, Lilac Love. This fragrance is all about um, 
you know, lilac, but it's also mixed with um, with cocoa powder. Uh, and for me, I can also feel some creaminess, uh, the cream here. It's also sweet. I would say it's also a gourmand type of fragrance. And uh, if you could imagine, let's say, uh, a beverage, a hot beverage, where you could mix uh, cacao, the bitter cacao, the bitter chocolate with um, uh, cream and add their um, lilac syrup, if such a syrup existed, that would be the this fragrance for me. So it's very also uplifting. It also brings smile to my face and I love it. At the same time, it has a bit of retro vibes, like uh, old school vibes, which I love. And for me, particularly this retro vibes, they make this fragrance so beautiful. Uh, it makes it so complex, not like food type of um, uh, gourmand uh, fragrance. Again, it has that French perfumery uh, character uh, in uh, French school character in this fragrance, which makes it very, again, uh, complex and uh, beautiful. And again, not that gourmand. Uh, it keeps it in the category of uh, fragrances, not food, as I said. So it's very beautiful. And the next year, I think 2018, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in 2018, yes, the Love to Be Rose was created. And I don't have a full bottle of this fragrance because I'm not a big fan of tuberose. So I decided to go for this hair mist and I was right because this is not exactly my cup of tea. Uh, I can smell, um, except tuberose, very beautiful creamy tuberose. I know that it has a note of the whipped cream here, but besides that, I can feel lots of animalic here. I don't know, probably this is uh, particularly in, in this uh, bottle because this is a hair mist and it smells differently from the perfume itself. However, I'm not ready yet for this type of tuberose. Um, again, like with the Honor, again, this one, is a miss for me. And the same year, 2018, another fragrance was released and this is uh, a Moage imitation. And I love this one. I bought it um, first. I had, a, again, the sample uh, of this fragrance, which I used completely and uh, I fell in love with this, uh, with that fragrance and I ordered the full sized bottle. This is all about very cold black currant, um, I would say it's like a black currant candies. Um, in the middle notes, uh, for me, this fragrance is very different from the top smells like a very cold uh, black currant juice, probably, or black currant, as I said, candy, a very cold one because this has aldehydes. And in the middle, it smells like uh, Coca Cola, and then it smells like um, Karma by Lush, if you know this fragrance. They, it has very similar vibes. And I love all of this. I love black currant candies. I have. I like. I, I love Coca Cola, and I love um, Lush uh, Karma, uh, which is the signature fragrance of my sister, by the way. It's beautiful. It's very loud. I need to warn you. It's very loud. The projection is huge. The sillage is huge. This is a type of fragrance that goes in front of you. You know and um, it's very noticeable and quite loud, but I love to wear this during the hot weather, uh, probably because of the aldehydes. The aldehydes make this fruits, this berries very cold. That's why it's very refreshing. I love it. Beautiful, gorgeous fragrance. Um, I would save it for every day, but I know people wear this uh, when they go out, when they you know dress up. I would say this fragrance doesn't require any dress up. You can dress up it or dress down it. So. It's still gorgeous, very beautiful and long lasting, by the way, as, as, as I said, most of the amouages are. And the last fragrance that was released the same year when the Christopher Chong left, it was in 2019. This is a fragrance um, that's called Portrayal. Again, a very beautiful um, petrol uh, rainbow type of uh, fragrance uh, bottle and uh, this is the fragrance that is devoted to freedom the woman's freedom uh, and I think it's definitely there uh, this is all about jasmine and it's very indolic jasmine very loud uh, concentrated to the highest point and 
very um, you know uh, noticeable <clears throat> the fragrance that makes statement the fragrance that um, attracts lots of attention and it, it's very loud it shouts it says look at me um, it's mixed with the uh, uh, tobacco notes like a cigarette type of tobacco for me which is a very beautiful combination of um, indolic uh, aspect of jasmine and cigarettes and tobacco here uh, it doesn't smell like an ashtray uh, type of tobacco not at all it's very beautiful tobacco here uh, and it's also has a very a dash of vanilla here it's not sweet at all and i would say uh, the, the this combination of these three notes they work perfectly for this fragrance uh, i love it i love it but i need to admit i don't wear it quite a lot because for me again this is a fragrance that attracts all the attention and you need to look perfect to fit this fragrance uh, so for me this is mostly the night out type of fragrance you definitely can uh, wear it when you go to the pub uh, club because it has this uh, smoky cigarette uh, type of uh, note there and it's quite loud uh, it's really a fragrance that uh, attracts all the attention this is what you probably need when you go out and it's not a love from the first sniff um, however when you understand this fragrance when it you know uh, goes to your heart and it stays there forever so um, i think that's it this was my last bottle for today i hope this uh you know this video was interesting and if you have any of today's fragrances please let me know what you think about them do you agree with me or disagree i appreciate all type of opinion all type of comments and also tell me about the fragrances from amouage that uh, you know are your favorites probably they are not in this list the, the you know uh, fragrances that get you lots of compliments most of the compliments it's also very interesting for me um, thank you very much for watching if you like this video I will appreciate if you could um, support me with your likes if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel I invite you to do so to consider subscribing and don't forget to press that notification bell to be notified about my next video release uh, also i invite you to visit my instagram page uh, i also post there some interesting pictures probably you will like them and also subscribe uh, thanks again so much for watching me and i hope to see you in my next video next week bye